Hey guys, today we are going to do a quick walk around around Madjuk, which is well requested by now. And I'm going to show you what I did to Madjuk, how it's modified, what I like about it, and what you can do too. So let's start with the optics. I did my decals by Moto Pro Works, as you can see here. They have many different kits, and I like it a lot. It's high quality. It worked. For the bands or manifold as you might call it, we did this tape of glass fiber is it actually and also in the front. In German we call it something like heat protection fabric. Actually it's more for optics and also it keeps the exhaust pipe very hot which makes post combustion possible more easily. Also for optics I did the carbon over here, over here. And we'll do quite some more. Here is also one on the front of right here. Also two back parts here. And I'll go with the decals and do them again so that it's fresh, not just black. Also, this one is going to come in carbon and also going to get the decals again for the Duke. Now I think that's pretty much for the optics. We could say the mirrors, which are actually Victory high setter mirrors, I think everybody knows them pretty much. I've actually affiliate links from Amazon in my description where you can find them. I have mounted them directly on my vibration dampers or bar endings. If you have a lathe, so like a turning machine, where you can machine this and change it, you can make like a step into it that you can mount them directly onto here. You can buy the endings for the steering bar, which are from Victory High Sider, which are quite expensive and are not that solid. This is super solid and I love it. So I did that on both sides. Also, I've added some rims here, rim sticker, which are the ready to race. Also from Motor Pro Works, which are 50-50, like one fourth is on black and one fourth is on white, which I do like a lot. Front decals, as we just said, I have added crash bars, like the crash case, which is actually from KDM originally. Um, originally, as I started thinking about that, I wanted to have it for optics actually, but now I'm very happy that I <laughs> have bought it because it does a really, really insane, insanely good job saving the engine from scratches and anything. I had one accident or crash before I had the crash cages where my engine got scratched a little bit here but they are amazing i love them for optics i have forgotten that i have also these parts from carbon also the seat is the power parts seat from ktm only the front one the previous owner i bought the bike with like 2000 kilometers had already installed it back then so i kept it because i like it and the optic of the optics here are very nice so what else is for optics? Shortened my plate holder. This is the original plate holder and it's been shortened by like 10 centimeters or so so that it fits well with the back tire. If you take a look at that, this is like it fits well right here. There are also different plate holders which are a lot more steep which is very quickly illegal and police doesn't like it and it's very close but you can also install them in a way where it's legal at least here in Austria uh, but it wasn't really for me I like the original one and it just made it shorter can highly recommend I like the look also it was for when you ride riding ride in rain it's like the water won't go all the way up here or at least not as much as it does if you have a complete shortened one for optics we have the Akrapovic, it comes right from KTM as it is. It's a bit hard to modify it, you can watch my other video on the Duke mod, sound mods. I have a video in here, but I haven't put it in here. So this is the racetrack DB killer for the Duke 390 and it's still in the limits of, in the noise limits, so to say. What's next? For practicals I've mounted these, I don't know how to, I have no idea how to call it in English, which are actually just on a swing arm to pack up the bike i'll just do it actually this one is self-made but you can buy all of them too let's not talk about optics i think optics is pretty much finished if you have any questions 
leave me a comment and also like this video if you enjoy it. I love to have your feedback. So let's go to practicals. What is installed here is a very special conversion kit. It's actually the HiMac or HUMAC, however you want to call it. Conversion kit is what you usually have on enduro bikes or off-road bikes. There is possibility to use hydraulic systems on previous Bowden systems, so with by cable or wire. So usually you have a cable or a wire down, going down here, which actuates the clutch. But in this case we have the Magura HC1, which is the same on, as on the Super Duke, with 13 millimeters of diameter. And this one just pumps mineralic oil through here and actuates the actuator down here. And it's a very nice system actually because it's of much higher quality as the cables that come stock OEM. Also, as it's simply just better quality because the original unit, which is mounted here, is very like, it has a lot of play. It's not very well fabricated. I have to say the Duke 390 is an Indian bike or it's an Austrian bike, but it is manufactured in India and it's made very well actually from the weldings, the coloring, all the technique which is in the bike, which is our like brakes, everything is great, except like for the brake actuators on top and also the clutch. This is like really crap what is installed originally to just, I guess, save on money on this bike to make it not too expensive, but it just doesn't look good and it doesn't feel good when you have it for like 10 or 20,000 kilometers. So this system is actually like the Magura Hymax system as it is called, but with the Magura HC1, which has 30 millimeters, as I just said. Preferably, it would be 11 millimeters, but if you want to use the HC1, it only comes as small as diameter with 13 millimeters. I have customized this in a German motorcycle shop, let it ship here. It's pretty expensive, it's around 500 bucks, which is not really... I have to on this bike, but I love it and I would do it immediately again. Also on this side, this is a very nice practical one, which I enjoy a lot. Also it's for optics, as actually if you, uh, when you sit on a bike, you can see it also looks much of much higher quality with the two reservoirs and also with better levers and the radial pumps. I enjoy the looks of these machined pieces a lot compared to the original which just looks like crap compa in comparison. Also for these two guys I've also installed the Sinto Evo which is a quite expensive lever. It's around goes around 100 bucks but it is fully CNC machined and it really speaks for itself if you ask for quality. It's like there is no play anything here even the original KTM brake lever I had bought for like 100 bucks, 109 bucks back then when I destroyed the OEM one was really crappy compared to this one and these are actually is the same clutch pump as for the Super Duke and this is also the same brake actuator or the same brake pump as you have it on the Super Duke as well. Actually very many bikes use this brake pump like from Aprilia the I, th I think the R660 has it too, but also like the super bikes like RSV4, Super Duke, many bikes use this pump on OEM, the higher quality ones. This is 60 millimeters in diameter of the pump and they call it Brembo PR 16 by 19 and 16 is the diameter and 19 is the lever, the leverage here. And as, as more leverage as you get, the harder the pump feels, but the less brake force you actuate. So it's just the feel of the pump. So this one is 16 by 9 and it works beautifully. It's just, it works perfectly fine. It's The original one was so soft and this one is really has really a nice pressure point. And it's, it's like when I do full force braking actions like this, there is not much... I couldn't complain about it. That's perfect. Here on the front I have done minor changes as I've done a service on my fork. 
I've added 7.5 W fork oil, which is not the original one. I think the original one is on a 5 W, which makes it a bit harder, truly now, not like on the back end, but makes the fork truly a bit harder when you brake or come down from a wheelie. It's not too big of a difference, but it is definitely it is definitely recognizable. And but the original one I enjoyed a lot too, so that's just a minor change. Now to very very important point for um, usables and stuff that's like functional on the on the bike, which is not visually recognizable and fully legal, of course, is the quick shifter on the Duke 390. This one is a 2070. I should have said that in the beginning, and it has the Hiltec EQS E1 quick shifter installed. But unfortunately, Hiltec doesn't sell these for the Duke 390 as ignition cutters. The ignition is right here, the ignition coil, but they sell it as an injection cutter. And the injection cutters doesn't, don't work as well and don't sound as nicely as the ignition cutters. So I tried myself to connect the EQS E1 from Heeltec with the Duke 390 just on ignition. You can buy it on my online shop, which will be online around May, mid-May. And you can get the whole system around 300 bucks for the Duke 390. I'll do a whole installation video and test on the Duke 390 with this system that you can have a look at how it works and how to install it. But basically you need to take these two off, these guys, plug my cable in, plug the EQSE from Hiltec in and get my settings on, install the sensor correctly with the cable and then you're already ready to go. But I will make a complete video on this. For the brakes, I actually didn't change anything here except the brake pump on the top. Preload on the spring I usually run on middle. I've tried it on hard and soft, which is not really hard or soft, but like the preload as I just said, which is not the same as making your back end harder or softer. Another very important thing is, but I don't really feel a lot of difference between those settings, so I just run it on mid. Works perfectly for me. I'm around 75 kilograms or 80 with my ladder on. Now about my sprocket setup. I can tell you the front sprocket I've set as original on 15 teeths and the back one is an original on 45. But I was not really happy since the gears are pretty short, so it's like which is like enduro and super bikes and sport bikes have it rather longer, like which is a lot influenced not only by the gear in the motor but also on your sprocket setup. So I have changed that on the back end from 45 to 43 which is not a lot of difference but you can feel it clearly when you ride it feels a lot smoother other people have also also gave me feedback that they enjoy it a lot as i have recommended to them and of course the, the the bike has a little bit less torque on the back end on the rear wheel but also it is just nice to ride and i've had no problems since i've changed it at all I've, it's the third set of these which I run and I would do it immediately again like that because it's just much more enjoyable to ride the Duke as it is with the 43 on the back end. I have installed here from Quadlock and foam mount of course for my steering bar it's still the, the first one, the original one. The quick shift is, was like the best investment on the bike. As you have good sound on the 390 Duke, you have of course to modify the exhaust system a bit because the original one is like crap to say it as it is. But when you have really nice sound, the quick shift is just a blessing. And without the nice sound, it's still a blessing because it works just so fine. I love it. I love it a lot. So it's like I didn't think that it would be so much fun before I bought it but now I don't regret it at all. Is there anything else? I've added some stickers like this one, a Brembo sticker which I enjoy a lot, a motor which I'll have to do new when I do this in carbon, also the complete decals. I've added one of my brand over here from Short Riders. We have a Krapovic sticker over here which is still optics, I've just skipped previously and I think actually that's it pretty much. If you have any questions about the Duke 
feel free to drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer them all and as soon as possible. I'm pretty busy at the moment, but I'll find some time to answer all your questions. And I'm very happy to help you out and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon, man.